building a strong community is one of the most important and beneficial aspects of life. Of course, we see examples of communities at work in nature as well. Our native little blue penguins have unshakable social bonds. They thrive in communities. For their safe haven, their home is at risk. The biggest threat to the blue penguin's survival is climate change. It's something we all have to confront, nowhere more so than in our own coastal communities. The big difference is, whilst penguins choose where they want to live instinctively, we have a choice as to where we build our homes. So, just how strong do those social bonds have to be that you couldn't imagine building anywhere else? Perhaps, like these little penguins, it's instinct after all. The Christchurch seaside suburb of New Brighton has a picture-perfect location, but has never quite been as sought after as many other coastal areas around New Zealand. In part, the blame lies with the prevailing easterly wind, often fierce and nicknamed the beasterly for very good reason. However, scratch the surface and you'll find a proud and supportive local community and people like Esther and Josh Perriam and their children, Elliot and Reed, who wouldn't live anywhere else. My grandparents were born here, my mum born here, I was born here, my kids were born here. I'm proudly a Brighton girl. Nice day at the beach this morning. Josh came from a rural Canterbury background. He must have wondered what he'd got himself in for. At the age of 18, <laughs> met this one and had to move to Brighton, which <laughs> it was a bit of a challenge for me. I thought Brighton was a rough neighbourhood, a place you would steer clear of, really. Just a feeling that people who were in Brighton were stuck here rather than... Chose to live here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, it wasn't a choice to live in Brighton. Well, hell yes, it is. Actually, it is. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you're Brighton born and bred like Esther, the prime spot to live has to be Marine Parade, just across the road from the beach. Josh and Esther have had a section here for some time, the dream location for their dream home. I reckon this new house is going to be magic. I'm going to have the best kitchen. And warm. And warm <laughs> and dry. The couple are confident they've chosen the right architect who can make the most of the site. Someone Esther met by chance many years ago at a business conference. I sat next to an architect at the gala dinner and we started talking and we really clicked and I had a few wines and said, oh, you can build my house and he sort of sketched something out on a napkin and the, the vision of this house just sort of grew. Oh, yeah. Roger, you having breakfast? I've got a rock out. Esther works as part of a family business, providing resources to the elderly, while Josh is taking time out from his job in freight logistics to concentrate on the build. Until that's finished and the family moves in, they'll be staying at Esther's parents' house in New Brighton. Of course. We're pretty relaxed as a family. We all get on pretty well. Yeah, it's going to be great. Now, normally, this is when I meet Esther and Josh for the first time on their New Brighton section to talk about what they're building. But with the whole country in a COVID lockdown, we're going to have to do things differently. Josh, Esther, this is a little bit unusual. You're going to have to be my eyes and take me around the site, and I've only got this very small viewing window, so paint some pictures. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty terrible section, really, because the section's actually only 8.9 metres wide. 8.9 metres. Mm. So wow. I don't know if we can sort of scan around behind us. Yeah. Some of that section to side yard as well when you're building. Yeah, our architect has been very nice, and we've gone as wide as we can, and we have wonderful neighbours. Yeah. That fence line down there, it's like over 50 metres, so there's where we get our volume. Where you can see the trampoline and the swings, that's the end of the section. The kids have set up already, have they? 
<laughs> okay, confession time. When we moved from the old house, we uh, threw it over the fence. Perfect. <laughs> okay, so it's a decent length, isn't it? So I think it's something like 54 metres. It's long. Yeah. So it's, a, it's more than 500 square metres. So it's a normal section. It's just the city planners should never have been allowed to chop it like this, really. But you're happy they were. Oh, hell yeah, because we're on Marine Parade, baby. That's the vision. Josh and Esther's vision will be built using tilt slab construction with precast concrete panels forming the exterior walls. From the off-street parking at the front, it's up a set of stairs and into a large, welcoming, open-plan living space. The kitchen is a star here, with an oversized bench providing plenty of workspace and seating for large social gatherings. The living space leads to a long corridor, a bridge really, glass-lined on one side and, on the other, sliding doors out to a north-facing deck, fully protected from that beastily. The corridor continues on and down a flight of concrete stairs, making a clear delineation between social and more private spaces. In the back of the house are bedrooms for Elliot and Reed, a family bathroom, and Josh and Esther's master bedroom with ensuite and walk-in wardrobe. A small deck from the master looks out over the back garden. On such a long, narrow site, every square meter of house is precious, and all come together to turn Josh and Esther's long-held dream into reality. So you've been working away at this for quite some time. Yeah, it's always been a dream of mine to build, and I have always wanted to build in Brighton and always on Marine Parade. Since I was a child, I've just thought, this is something I really want. I want my own house that feels special and unique to me and in a place that I really love. But with that, a bit of expectation, anticipation, and, you know, will this house live up to that lifelong dream? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> massive, massive expectations. How long is the whole project going to take? By Christmas, we should be having a foundation and some walls. And then there's the longer job of fully closing it in. And then we move to the probably longest part, which will be the fit out. That's going to be the longest because Josh and my dad are going to try and do as much of it themselves. And that keeps the cost low. That's the plan. <laughs> we are penny pinching everywhere we can. <laughs> so we know that it's going to be tight. <laughs> so what does that mean? How much do you have to spend on the house? We're pushing a budget of around 610. Well, 610 would still be a, a tight budget. Are you project managing? My dad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so dad uh, will be heavily involved. He's an ex-builder. I see. And he gets paid with cups of tea, does he? Uh, he gets paid when we leave his house. He'll be so thrilled. <laughs> oh, even better. You have the man hostage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I wish you the best of luck, and I'm really excited to come down and actually be there and see this happening. So bye for now and see you soon. See you soon. I just love Josh and Esther's energy and humour, and they're going to need large amounts of both, building on their very tight section. Using precast concrete panels means that this house will go up very quickly, so I hope they're ready. I really enjoy a project like this, where there's so many restrictions that it demands a really clever solution. Now, I haven't even been to site, but from this model, I can see that there's potential that this is a real sweetie. But then again, this is just cardboard. I'm afraid for the real proof, we're going to have to wait till it's set in concrete. But why did the architect choose precast concrete for a residential build? Well, it turns out he's got good experience here. His own home is precast too. It's a very much a sort of a commercial construction process that we've gone through with the precast concrete walls, um, structural steel, and then steel purlins. So it's not like your you know, timber framed house where you've got timber framing and trusses and those sorts of things. And the reason I like that is because, you know, the structure goes up so quickly. You know, you get to see the finished forms within days. You know, you're not waiting weeks and the carpenters are coming and going. Yeah. And I think with that, you've also got the efficiencies too, that, you know, with a tight budget, you haven't got all those labour hours. The carpenters aren't spending as much time on site. The other thing I wanted too was durability. Obviously, you know, building out in the sea environment. So I think that was the second thing in the, in the back of my mind, was that you didn't want something that was going to age badly. 
Well, it hasn't escaped my attention that you're giving Esther a couple of concrete boxes. Is this going to work with her colourful, flamboyant personality? Oh, I think that'll be amazing. You know, we've, we've given her a concrete box. Yeah. And then her personality is going to come out inside. You know, she's going to add all these finishes and colours and textures, and it's just going to come to life. Josh is going to be building this in part. Are you worried about that? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, for a, a building of this type, it's just the finishing detail that, you know, carries it off. You know, it's a conquering box, but it's all that sort of finer detail and... Agreed. ..the finishes of materials and those sorts of things that are the heroes. And, you know, with, obviously, Josh, it's always a bit of a worry, you know, he's, he's never done this before. Architect Robert believes concrete will give Esther and Josh the best house for their modest budget. The precast panels will be made at this Christchurch factory, and the couple have come for a look, and with a couple of questions. Like, concrete for me is just, like, cold. I think of bunkers and warehouses and... Concrete block. Houses, yeah, like freezing. Flats. How are we going to keep this place warm? Oh, look, the system that you're putting in is so insulated, it's probably double a normal house. So that, that'll be really warm. And I think the aspects of that, you, you, you can't beat it. People love it. Love the, the warmth and the, and the coolness in summer. So it's all year round. It's not, and the, your energy use should be pretty re reduced. If you come over here, guys, this, well, this here simulates the, the system. And that, that, that's the concrete there. This is the polystyrene with the jib on this side. And that, that's like a, a big wall with the roof on top. So it just looks like a normal house on the inside. I do like the look of it, I've got to say. Like, it's pretty modern and edgy. I like it. The other thing weighing on their minds, though, is how their modern and minimalist home will fit into a neighbourhood of mainly traditional homes. On the other hand, maybe that's a change for the better. What do you think of it? You think it's a bit edgy? I think edgy? it's going to be pretty thick and awesome. I mean, it's going to stand out. People are going to cool. notice it. But hopefully, you know, it could be the building of the future. But man, it's it's going to be... Permanent. Very permanent. <laughs> a bright start to the festive season with a big day at Josh and Esther's build at New Brighton. A total of 14 precast panels are going to be craned onto site and placed into position today. That's how fast this type of construction is. Oh, my God. Slowly, slowly. Yeah. Well, here's your dream coming together piece by piece. Yeah, I feel a bit tearful, <laughs> actually. It's, wow. The occasion has attracted plenty of attention, with friends and Farno all keen for the big show. What do you think of that? Very good. You sold me on that. Having a vacant section right next door is extremely fortunate, allowing the crane to lift panels to all parts of the section without having to change location. With the panels going in, you can really see just how tall and close to the boundary this house will be. Josh and Esther talked to their neighbours early in the design process and got their permission before going off to the council for the building consent. With the outside of their house going up literally before Josh and Esther's eyes, it's easy to understand a bit of emotion. Oh, do feel sad about it. Not sad, happy sad. Happy sad. After Josh and Esther, the most excited onlookers are their children, Reed and Elliot. Once the house is built, we get our own rooms, so I get to finally, finally not share with my little brother. <laughs> I think this is definitely Mum and Dad's dream home. They're going to stay in it until either they go into a retirement home or something, or they just, like, die. By mid-December, the Auckland COVID border controls have been lifted. And with the build happening so fast, I get to Christchurch quick smart. The first time I met Josh and Esther was online. 
But today I've made it. I'm here in New Brighton, strolling along the pier in the sunshine. Fantastic. Now, you see, the thing with this build is, because of its nature, large elements of the house have arrived already. So it's going to be a real day of discovery for me. Hey. How Hello. are you? Great to see you. You too, in Josh. person. Yes, yes. Tom. Yes, there you are. You've been busy. It's been amazingly fast, is what it's been. It looks great in the sunshine. It's kind of sculptural, isn't it, in its raw form? Yeah. And much taller than I thought it was going to be. Taller than the neighbours imagined as well, oh. I think. <laughs> OK. Yeah. It does feel quite industrial, but that's yeah. what we were going for. And it's, it's going well. So some asbestos was spotted uh, in the sand. Oh, right. So we have to get a certificate to say that it's safe to work. Mm. And the sand was more sandier than they expected, so more we had sandier. to bring in like all this gravelly yeah. stuff. That combined with the asbestos has meant that we're about $50,000. Oh, ouch. Above what we had planned. <laughs> like, we are trying to build something truly beautiful and long-lasting on a real shoestring budget. Although building with precast concrete is quick early on and long-term maintenance is low, construction costs are very similar to a timber build. Josh and Esther haven't got much room to move on the budget and they have to hope that there are no more nasty surprises. So we are on our courtyard's deck between the two pods. So along the backside here, we've got a bridge across here. Oh, OK. To link the two pods together. So you'll lose the wind. Yeah. yeah. This generous deck, forming a courtyard space in the middle of the house, protected from the wind, is a masterstroke of design. So simple and easy on the budget. It's not the only example of clever design here either. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? We're you're kind of drawn to the front of the house for the sea. We've always wanted to have a sense of space, uh, but we yeah. you know, don't have a budget to build huge. So right. being able to, you know, that borrowed landscape right. of the sand dune and the, and the feeling of the beach. So you get that real feeling of wilderness and being out. So when does the dream become a reality? W where are you at? When's it going to finish? So our builders, um, are contracted to give us a lock-up shell. Yeah. So they're going to hand over this roof, windows, door, lock-up shell, mid to late February. Mm -hmm. Including the deck? The deck <laughs> might be down to me. Okay. <laughs> okay, so mid to late February, it's watertight. And yeah. the, the pace of that will depend on the money. My list is getting a wee bit longer right. as we go through this, as money yeah. gets caught up as the build goes along. But at this stage, we're talking about end of July, move-in complete, job done. You know, building like this with precast panels is a fascinating process. There are huge leaps of progress on site. And actually, it's tempting to take one leap too many. I get the impression that Esther's already ordering canopies for that housewarming party. And the truth is, there's quite a long road to go. A fine day dawns over New Brighton, just what the concrete crew ordered. And they're here bright and early to begin pouring the floor slab. It's certainly a different sort of work day for Josh, and he'll be on the tools here himself soon enough. He is, though, very quickly pressed into action. An unexpected bonus has presented itself, and Josh wants to take full advantage. We've got some spare concrete. What we're going to do here is uh, place a 20-foot container. We'll put some new cladding on it, and. That's going to be our back shed here. This is going to be Josh's dog box. <laughs> Dual purpose, perhaps. This is what happens when you come and visit friends on holiday. They put you to work. It's been quite a baptism of fire for Josh, though. No cushy office job, this. And he's going to have to step up. Being that I've got no knowledge of, of how a house goes together and 
the decisions that need to be made. It has been a bit of a challenge, but so far so good. One of the architect's signatures is to name each property. So we went with it and I'm really happy with it. I like it. So the dunes it is. Sounds a bit like a honeymoon resort, but that's okay. And Josh seems good too for someone who's recently jumped right out of his comfort zone. Mind you, if he wants to keep this project on budget, he has to get with the programme and stay with it. Plans for a house, they don't do much for me, but when I actually see it, it's a whole lot more exciting. It's going to be seriously cool. Into the new year at Brighton. And the heat's still on at Josh and Esther's build on Marine Parade. Today, the team is set to install the roof purlins, which are bolted directly to the concrete wall panels. Yeah, the build's screaming ahead. These purlins will all go up today. We'll be ready for a roof tomorrow. Because Esther works locally, she can and does stop by the site every lunchtime. And with the exterior going up so quickly, she needs to focus on what she wants to do inside. It's really amazing walking into the space now. This front pod is all living, dining, kitchen. Here is an enormous kitchen island, and like it starts there and it comes all the way down to here. So it's really big, designed with seating around so that we can sit with family and friends and entertain. The industrial design is something that Josh and I have always loved but we're not into sharp edges and clean cuts and clean lines. We are, by nature, soft, homely people. So I don't want this house to be full of new stuff. Inside, I'm like, I've got a vision, but I don't know if I can pull it off. So, despite the lightning speed of progress to date, is the bill suddenly going to shift down a few gears when Josh takes over, even under the expert guidance of retired builder Bodge? There is definitely anxiety about things. You know, they're going to do their best, but their best isn't going to be builder speed. Yeah. It's going to be family speed. <laughs> In April, Josh and Esther's run of good fortune comes to an abrupt halt. A nationwide shortage of steel delays the roof for several weeks. And there's also a supply issue with the glass. Another delay in the builders being able to hand the project over to Josh and Bodge to finish. And unfortunately, there's more bad news. I arrive at Brighton for another visit, only to discover both Josh and Esther have come down with COVID and are isolating with their children. I'm going to soldier on alone, and I'm not sure what to expect. This building hasn't decided what it is yet. It's still maybe at the bunker stage. Lots of concrete. Very, very neat. And very smart, too. I love this long corridor. It has a runway-like quality, with a deck on one side and windows on the other. And when you descend the stairs, the level change makes that separation between the front living room and the private family space at the rear so clear. It does feel cozy. Feels kind of hunkered down in the dune. No question for me, this long and narrow design totally makes the most of the site. Inside just doesn't feel compromised at all. There's plenty of volume here, creating what I believe will be a very livable home. Problem is, right now, the build has been delayed, and Josh and Bodge are cooling their heels, waiting to take over. On the positive side, there are plenty of other things they can do. Hey. How is it? Really enjoyable, nice little waves, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So there's you and Josh building the house, or is it this you and Josh Well, it surfing? Well, depends on the conditions. I mean, yeah, it's uh, always an option that you can have an extended lunch if the surf's good. To me, that's what, what living at the beach is all about. You can work and you can play as well. It's great. And Esther's convinced that you're going to do both? Yeah, she knows. She's lived, well, I've lived with her for over 40 years. She yeah. knows. They're taking on a lot. No, I look, I've, I've worked all my life, and I'm enjoying being involved with this. I've brought up the children here on the beach, 
Esther grew up with a love of the beach like me, and it was her choice to come and live down here, so I was wrapped. Contractors have created the bones of this building, but now it's up to Josh, with Bodge's expert tutelage, to transform this and elevate it from a bit of a concrete box. I'd like to see them encapsulate all of Esther and Josh's quirkiness and turn this into a home that fits precisely here in New Brighton. Because of the steel and glass delays, it's July before the builders can hand over the watertight exterior. Not February as Josh had initially hoped. So he's right into his work. And while he's keen and obviously has a vested interest, the sum total of his building experience is not so much. A couple of weeks ago, I didn't feel qualified to use a broom, but slowly, the, 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 it's all filling in. Josh's learning curve is certainly steep, but he's also just discovered how true the old saying is, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. I understood it that how you mark a roof in a skylight is to drill a hole in the four corners. Roofer came back a week later, said, who's drilled holes in my roof? So that was a bit of a disaster. I had to get a, a flashing created to cover the hole, which, you know, it's another 1,500 bucks. Yeah. With Josh taking leave from his regular job, Esther's now the family's sole breadwinner. Plus, she's running the budget for the build. And this means any unexpected costs, like the odd $1,500, will be noticed. Oh, there's times when we're not managing, I think, when, when things are falling between the cracks and, you know, we think we've got something sorted and we haven't. And, yeah, we're just running on adrenaline, I think. We've had time to shop ahead, and so we've bought things when they've been on sale, we've looked for clearance items, we've scoured, you know, trade me and all sorts of things. Just if we can save money, we are saving money. I have yet to come across a build where they stick within the budget. And she is so budget conscious that I think she's going to find that that's going to be a real struggle to contain that, to be truthful, yeah. Poor old Josh, who knows how he'll go. Sometimes I think he's a bit overloaded with the expectations, but he'll be fine, I think. And there's all that, you know, skill that he can learn from, from Bodge, isn't there? <laughs> bloody wind. We had one little hiccup, but, you know, he's learnt from it, and now if there's anything he's unsure of, uh, he'll come and ask me first, which is good. As far as I can see, so much depends now on Bodge keeping a close watch on Josh and passing on his skills and know-how. And with such a tight budget, that's a big responsibility. Having Josh on site replacing the role of so many qualified tradespeople is certainly saving money, but at what cost? As well as working full time, studying at university and being mum, Esther's coordinating the interior design of the new house and she's taking inspiration from the local environment. the most amazing lichen on the bottom of these steps. And the colour is like minty gorgeousness. The beach is the most inspiring place for me all the time. It's like refreshing and invigorating and it's everything I want our house to be. And the marum grass, it's all golden on the ends and on the rear of the leaf is this beautiful sort of bluey green that I absolutely love. Esther's not going it alone, though. She's getting professional advice from two interior designers, and her mum's on board as well. These are fabulous. Uh, the fish. The fish. The fish. That is a beautiful yeah, wallpaper. Mind. Now, pattern wallpaper is not to everyone's taste, I have to say. And interestingly, Josh isn't saying much. It may be discretion. It may be shock. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? That dark that blue. blues. But I suspect he's just keeping his powder dry for when he feels he has to take a stand. I like this. Josh 
Where are you, Joshy? I don't like that one, though. No. <laughs> Thank you for the honesty. <laughs> oh, we've definitely had to compromise. I mean, I'd paint a house probably pretty vibrantly. I, I've lived in a house with blood red walls and, you know, but Josh is not, Josh is not like that. So, yeah, we've had to look at uh, how to bring colour in a way that's not, quite frankly, offensive, probably, to Joshy. But, um, yeah, Josh hasn't entirely got his way. It's not white. <laughs>Christchurch turns it on again for my next trip, and I'm starting to get an appreciation of why Esther and Josh rate living in the Brighton community so highly. Great vibe here. You really see what Esther and Josh love about this place, this community. It's a place to put down roots. By now, Josh and Bodge have formed a tight little team and look to be enjoying themselves. And so they should be. Well, it's great progress here. It yeah. was a lot of concrete and some joinery, but now you can feel the end in sight. At least I can. Is that, is that how you feel? Oh, sure. Every week goes yeah. by and progress is, is, is impressive. Yeah. How's the budget been going? It's been going OK. So we're, we're having some wins and, and then we have a couple of losses, you know? So. I never knew how many flashings went into a house. Right. <laughs> a word I'd never come across before. Yeah, and yeah. because of those surprise bills, we've had to take more on ourselves. So I will be tiling. And of course, they've decided to undertake their own painting. I think it might push it out a bit, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. We would love to get a team of painters in here and knock it out in a week or two. The budget won't allow it. While Josh and Bodge work on, Esther, Reed and Elliot have their own project on the go. This huge sand dune is actually the reason New Brighton exists at all as a residential suburb. And locals have to make sure that the dune, as much as possible, stays put, protecting their houses. We're working with our local ranger here to put in some really amazing grass, which helps grow our sand dunes. So it stops them from being sucked into the ocean and all the wind destroying them. So we are protecting our dune so that our dune keeps protecting us. Yeah, right, and, and the house which is just over there. We're just literally on the other side of the, yeah. of the hill here, so yeah, it's um, a great way for the kids to be involved and I think to take some, you know, like ownership, that idea of, you know, they're not going to be running up and down the dunes, destroying the planting, because yeah. they've done the work. Sure, that Yeah. extra bit of care. Getting these guys down is, is exactly what we live for, because this is locals adopting their beach and getting out here and protecting it and yeah. making it happen. The native spinifex grass is planted to bind the sand together. It's remarkably tolerant of salt spray and high winds, and here it really needs to be, especially when that beastly blows in. It is something else. It's cold, it's horrendous, and the wind will blow sand back in. Right. But if I've got spinifex grabbing it, yeah. it'll be fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Josh originally estimated that the house would be completely finished by July. That was pushed out by supply issues with the steel and glass, and then by doing the painting and tiling themselves. So now it's December, and even though Josh is almost done, he's also pretty much done in. Oh, he's just chipped the door. Thanks to his experience learnt on the job, Josh is now keeping his mistakes to a minimum, or at least to himself. But there is an issue in the family bathroom that's going to be pretty hard to hide. Turns out you can't cut floor tiles with a scriber. I had a wee bit of a tenty, shall we say. So uh, it broke once, and then it may have broken a few more times under uh, pressure from me. Yeah. Anyway, listen, Luke. Which would be all fine and dandy, and Josh can chalk it down to experience, except for one small detail. So being an end of line, there are no more tiles in the country, which is a problem to solve. But, yeah, I should have measured it. 
If there's one thing I know about building, it's that no matter what the setbacks are, the sun always comes up the next day. I'm hoping Josh and Esther will be extraordinarily proud of their family house. Built on a site not even nine meters across. Built somewhat unconventionally with concrete. Built to make the most of every single dollar. At the end of the day, I hope this forever home lives up to all the expectations and delivers on all the dreams. Long-held expectations. That's what this is about. Yeah, it's been a, a lifelong dream for Esther, inherited by Josh. And so I'm just itching to find out, has the reality lived up to that dream? And moreover, has the architecture delivered? I can see it now. It's looking very fine indeed. How are you? I'm great. Welcome. Thank you. Great to see you. So good to see you. Hey, oh, man. <laughs> How are you, mate? <laughs> good. I can tell why. Look at this. I mean, you're established Marine Parade residence. A long time coming, but here we are. Yeah. 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 Come and have a look inside. Thank you. I love this grand ar arrival up the stairs. Yeah. Under the canopy. Yeah. It's a lovely great door. Yeah. This is the Alice in Wonderland door. Yeah, which must mean there's something special behind it. And well, there is. This is just full of personality. Yeah. Everywhere you look. Yeah. And of course, of course it is. It's your house. <laughs> so you've got some colour going on. It's all about the beach, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What's inside is a good match. Yeah. Our vision always was really harsh outside, but inside warm and cosy. That felt like a home. Oh, and it does that in so many ways. Uh, well, look, and what, yeah. what's this? Oh, Tom, when I used to have spare time, I used to go hunting. And so those antlers are from a red deer in the Molesworth. I mean, every beach house needs some antlers, right? Well, you're the first person <laughs> who's ever said that. <laughs> now, this is a kitchen. This really is. I mean, it fills the space. Yes. And just goes on and on. Yeah, it's certainly a big kitchen, but it doesn't feel overwhelming, I don't think. This does really allow me to keep an eye on everything and, you know, make sure everyone's feeling entertained and okay. fed. I love just talking with people and having people around and making great times. While the front of the house is a classic entertainer's delight, the long corridor between the two pods is a very strong architectural feature and the decor is dark. That's a bold choice, I think. So it's black. Yeah, so the idea was when we were talking about what are we going to do with this space, not to be frightened of the fact it was a tunnel, like turn it into a tunnel. Don't try and make it look bigger, mm. make it a feature. And then the courtyard. I think this is dead clever. It is, and it works so well. This space is used all the time. What I really like about it is the cost per metre square for this little bit of house. <laughs> yeah. Much less than those two, right? But it still feels like part of the house. It expands the house. The couple aim to keep to their tight budget by doing a lot of the work themselves. And one thing Josh struggled with was the tiling in the family bathroom. This is the room of many lessons, Josh. Uh, oh, it's turned out really good. Who did you get in to finish it? <laughs> I did finish it myself. You did? But, man, it took some late nights. Sticking them down flat, that's where it, um, you know, that's where the job started. Sticking it down flat. Flat's always good. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no ridges there. Well, it almost looks professional. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> the corridor seems to stretch on forever, which is a reminder of just how long this house is compared to its modest width. Coming off it are bedrooms for Reed and Elliot, a separate toilet with an underwater theme, and right at the end of the house, the parents' sanctuary. This is the master bedroom. Ah, yes, uh, the, well, well, well the master <laughs> suite. 
It's a strong look. It's, uh, I mean, it's like a menagerie, isn't it? Yep. Certainly a lot of eyes. So you didn't choose this. This is, uh, this is Esther again. I think they are awesome. You know, some of the wallpapers I looked at were very loud and bright and very me. Right. He might not see that this is a sort of intermediate step, but it really is. <laughs> I could have gone much bigger. OK. OK, well, no, I think you've got it right. And, and Josh, I think you will learn to love it. I will. <laughs> And I also like the fact that you have, as part of your master suite, you've got this. I love the fact that the deck feels like it's fallen away from the, mm, like the window. Like it's a shutter that's just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. the same size. This house, it feels really big, but actually... It's not. It's not. It's a really sort of modest family home. It's all very, very well thought through. Thanks. So here we are, looking quite relaxed in a beautiful house. How does it feel? It's been a year, hasn't it? Yeah. It's quite the process. Yeah, it feels good, though. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure with a, a lifelong dream, right? Has this lived up to it? It has. It succeeded it. Every morning, I do expect, like, the cleaner to knock on the door and say, it's time to check out, give us the keys. This is a great result, right? And does oh, it feel like the finish line? Yeah. This, this is it, you? Oh, yeah. I'm finished. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're done. <laughs> Never again. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed it, just quietly. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> I don't know, it's just a happy place, or the happy build. Yeah. Yeah. Josh got the pleasure of being in there doing the stuff, and I was the one probably at the top thinking, oh my gosh, are we going to get to this milestone in time? And is this paperwork signed off the right way? And so we just had to like really watch it, be really careful, and accept that some prices just were going up, and that was it. That was a fact. So, what did you end up with? 685,000. Which includes the house. the house, not the yeah. land, of course. Not the land, because we, we had the land for you know a year or two before. So we remind built. me, the land costs two forty, two thirty, two thirty. So two thirty, two forty for the land, six mm -hmm. eighty five. You know, add those two together to get a house, including the land, beachfront, for under a million, well under a million. Mm -hmm. You know, you're nine hundred and nine hundred and fifteen. I think people would bite your arm off to get that. Wouldn't you yeah. agree? Oh, it's a great result. Um, and it's worth, it's worth it. It's a great result. It is. Must make you very proud. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It makes me just well up, you know, thinking about it. It is... I mean, very few people have a home that is built by the people they love. It's pretty cool. This story started with a dream and a simple sketch on the back of a napkin. And they've got their dream, haven't they? Josh and Esther have a house on Marine Parade. But you know, the thing I really love about this project, full of personal endeavor, is that the application of smart architecture has absolutely maximized the potential of this skinny slip of land. This house is fit for purpose, robust, inspirational, and it provides the perfect framework for a joyful life in a location and within a community that they love. Those are the fundamentals of a great home.